is a gorgeous piece. Fix it up for him, because that's the closest he's going to get to a barber. <laughs> Today, we're getting in a 1950s Coke cooler. They're extremely rare. Look, no hands. Oh, no, 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 no. How much are you asking for this? The work I have into it, I'm asking $40,000. You know, if you can go there, then good. If not, then you need to get back in your car and go home. Remember back in the day when things were made by hand and people took pride in their work? My name's Rick Dale, and I bring these things back to life. Every restoration has its own set of challenges. There's no owner's manual for what we do, but there's no job we can't handle. Oh. Today, we're getting in a 1950s Coke cooler that I bought. Holy crap, more work. I'm gonna re-engineer it and hopefully sell it for a whole lot of money. Come on, One, ladies. Two, three. Go. These coolers are over 600 pounds, so moving around is no joke. Look at that hole. Look out, look out. You're gonna wish you won't. Somebody could get hurt. Not to mention my cooler. Man, how long has that hole been there? That hole's been there a year. Tyler keeps running over it. Well, if you would fix it, that's good right there. This is actually a great cooler as it sits, but I'm gonna re-engineer it into a Coca-Cola hot dog cooler grill. How are we gonna turn it into a hot dog stand? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the cooler portion and we're gonna put a hot dog vendor in here. An original Coca-Cola hot dog cooler grill. They're extremely rare. They only made about 50 of them in 1954 and actually only five of them are known to exist right now. But replicas, they're hard to get to. They may not be worth as much as an original, but they're still very valuable. They actually had a huge, maybe five foot round tube running around as a double tube. And then the top of it had a bar and it said hot dogs. Then it had a globe on the top of it that lit up and spun around. What? You can imagine a bunch of little people with their little Coke hats on, all standing back here serving hot dogs and sodas. Big deal. No beer? <laughs> This is going to be a tough project. Not only do we have to restore the thing, we have to re-engineer it also. So we have to do a little bit of manufacturing, but it's, you know, because we got to insulate it so that the heat doesn't bother the cooling part. As far as building the rest of it, I think we got a pretty good idea on how to do it. You're going to have to hit the drawing board, it looks like. So what's a cooler like this worth as a cooler? These are about a thousand bucks, the way they sit. And then what's it worth as a hot dog bar? This one, after we get finished with this, is going to be right around $25,000. $25,000 for a hot dog bar. Yeah. This, in this. front of us. Yeah. Holy That's how cool this is gonna be. One of my best customers, Rick Harrison, is coming over today with a turn of the century barber's pole. Set it right over here. I have no idea what to expect on this, but I love vintage barber stuff. I've had Rick Dale restore a lot of barber's chairs for me. Whoa, that's great, man but I've never had him restore a barber's pole, and I want him to work his magic on it. Looks old, looks very old. I'm guessing late 18s, what do you guess? Uh, somewhere around there, yeah. This is a gorgeous piece. You know, I like it, it looks like a candy cane. <laughs> <laughs> the history attached to barber's poles is crazy. Barbers actually were our first surgeons. The old barber surgeons, they've been around for a thousand years. A thousand years. I mean, and believe it or not, doctors didn't do surgery. The barbers did the surgery and the physicians oversaw it. The red and white stripe symbolized how the barber used to hang his towels, his bloody one and his clean one out to dry. This is a Coke and it's very hard to read, very tarnished. They were a big, big company for barbers. And they got their start doing poles just like this. This right here is stained glass. It looks like someone in their garage tried to sand this down okay. and redo this, never finished. I mean, it's got a cord hanging out of it now. So somebody has lit it up. How would it have originally been? Because of this back panel here, I, I think it might have been lit up by either a, an oil candle or something like that. Okay. I mean, this thing was built like anything back in the day to last and last and last. It's incredible to think how much craftsmanship went into a barber's pole. This would have been in a small town, only seen by a few hundred people, and you just don't see that anymore. I really want to see it restored, but how much is it going to cost? Um, in order to put the thing together, they would use mastic. They mixed together, you know, cement and lime, and, and, and that gave it a seal in here to hold itself together. 
over the years, and it gets harder and harder, you literally got to grind this all out, all the way around there, and take it out a little at a time. If you get too fast on that thing, you're going to start snapping the glass right away, and I could just destroy it. So I'm going to be right around 800 bucks to get that thing back the way it is. What are the odds of you breaking it? 50. <laughs> 50. <laughs> if I break it, I'm going to ruin its value. But I know what it's going to look like restored, and I'm definitely willing to take that risk. All right, we'll do it up. All right. Okay. Fix it up for him, because that's the closest he's going to get to a barber. <laughs> We're working on a Victor Coca-Cola cooler. This thing is awesome and worth a good amount of money if we fix it up. But if we do a little bit more work on this thing, we can convert it into a hot dog cooler grill. So Cowboy's gonna do what he does best, break things down and take things apart. And Kyle's gonna make sure we don't lose nothing. I hate taking these things apart. Everything is rusted, nothing wants to come out. If you did as much work as you could play, we'd be done with this thing by now. Hurry up, cowboy, this is getting hot. I'm getting it. You let go, I'll still get up and whoop your ass. I'll hold it for you, you get to do the next one. Look in there, rust it out. We get a grinder in there and we just slip up one iota and we're gonna nail that glass. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, I got some news for you. When you've been doing this as long as I have, there's always a solution. How does that affect the value? All I can do now is hope that he's impressed enough so that he keeps coming back. Here we go. Now that the Coke machine's stripped down, I have to cut out a section in the top of it in order to make room for the hot dog cooker. There's a hot dog vendor that goes right here. Okay, it slides inside here, and then has a stainless steel back that comes up, and then a sneeze guard. Okay, so we need a hole. I'm gonna cut nine inches here. There's nine. Take it out back. I don't like to manipulate the authenticity of items, but on this one, the demand for the hot dog cooler is way higher. This thing is gonna be a one-of-a-kind piece. Nothing like the smell of burning metal in the morning, huh? All right, Kyle. Today, Kyle and I are working on the antique barber's pole. We gotta take this thing totally right. apart. Okay. Wait a minute. Look, this actually was powered. I thought it was gonna be a candle lit unit, but it's not. It was lit up. We discover things along the way on every restoration. Rick thought this was a turn of the century barber's pole, but because of the original wiring inside, it's more like 20 years later. But it's still probably worth about the same amount of money. And while he can't say it's 1800s, it will light up, so that'll even out the value. So when they made this, these were individual pieces. Individual pieces of glass mounted to each one of these bars. There's mastic in here, and then glass, and then mastic. I want to keep the glass intact. It's irreplaceable, and we will not be able to match it. Okay. These little things don't come with the instruction manual, so problem solving is a big part of this job. Look in there. The bottom side is rusted out. They look like, <laughs> like we found it at the bottom of the ocean. The screws at the bottom are rusted tight, so that means I'm gonna have to use some power tools to get them removed. The problem is, if I get the grinder inside there, I may nick the glass, which will end this project before I even get it started. We get a grinder in there and we just slip up one one iota and we're gonna nail that glass. This is just one of those we should just give them back. We're probably gonna do more damage to this or cause ourselves a whole bunch of work or money. And you think if we take all them screws out, that caulking should hold it together, huh? Isn't it glued here too, along the edge? No, there's a gap there. Every step of every project, not only do we run the risk of ruining someone's item, but also a piece of history. Think it'll come out? We'll try. Well, that's it. You want to push yeah. on it. Oh, that's it. Okay. Kyle, you're a genius. Thank you, boss. Oh, nice job. Good, huh? Yeah. Looks good. Didn't break it either. Damn yeah, right. Let's just lube the rest of it up, and uh, hopefully it'll it'll pop.
We've been working on this Victor Coca-Cola cooler to turn it into a vintage hot dog bar. This thing now needs some welding, so I'm gonna put Tyler on that job. Okay, push it in. Perfect. If Tyler's gonna wanna take over this business someday, he's gonna need to do everything. Okay, make sure I can see the upper line, all right? And welding is one of those skills that is very hard to master. I'm gonna spot weld the first one. I want you to watch me, and then uh, I want you to spot weld the other two. Yeah. Hold tight. We need to get a nice tight weld. When doing welding on a big item like this, we're gonna need to beat in spots in order to hold it into place. See, it's sort of like a spot. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice flow. Just tacked it on there just enough. Be close to the metal, and then you pull the trigger. Go back up and down. There you go. Just like that. Good job. Not bad for your first weld. Same gig. Tyler's welding skills are coming along pretty good. He just needs to learn a little bit more before he can take on something really big. We've been working on this barber pole for Rick Harrison for quite a while now. We got the glass all cleaned up and polished out all the sides. Now it's time to put it all back together. Look at this. <laughs> that came out nice. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be absolutely awesome. So far, so good, right? Looking good. Kyle, you're just full of so much emotion. You're like, you know, just like usual, right? How can I, like, cheer you up? A race? <laughs> well, that ain't happening anytime oh, soon. Come on. <laughs> Don't scratch it. Yeah. I think that's what I always tell you. I never, never expected this thing to look this nice. The colors that we mixed together with the nickel and the yeah. copper. I was kind of worried about cowboy polish and all that glass, but he did a good job on it. Yeah, nothing broke. Let's get these glass pieces in and we'll be set. Yeah. Rick is one of my most loyal customers, but I'm a little nervous about telling him that his barber pole is not from when he thought it was. This thing is really neat. I have never seen one like it, and I think it could be worth a lot of money. All I can do now is hope that he's impressed enough with the way it came out so that he keeps coming back. I'm all ready, man. All right, here we go. Boom! Wow! What do you that think? That is awesome. This is great. It really is. It's, uh, it's a world of difference. What all did you do it? Our goal was to clean up the glass and then plate this, plate this, and, and, and enamel this. So we got the glass out without breaking it, fortunately. And then we just ended up polishing all this metal in here. The barber pole is beautiful. Rick Dale never ceases to amaze me. The white pops, the red pops. It looks like the day it was mounted on its first barber shop. I just love this thing. I mean, it's just so, it's something you would see walking down the streets, 1880, and it's getting dark outside, so the barber comes out and puts the oil lamp or the candle or whatever they put inside this thing. I got some news for you. This is more 30 years newer than the 1800s. And the reason why I'm saying that is that the lighting inside was actually original. Okay. So nobody ever changed it and made it electric. So it's probably 1920, you know, right in there. When he told me I was off by that, I'm thinking, oh no, this thing's only worth like a thousand bucks or something like that, and I'm just gonna take it in the shorts. How does that affect the value? Well, I tell you what. It's not gonna affect the value at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. It's still a very, very rare barber's pool made by Koken, and, uh, you know, with it not being a spinning one, it's very ornate and, and very original. So I think you should be able to get between thirty-five and four thousand dollars. That much? Yeah, it, it, because of its originality, and uh, there's not any of these around. This particular model, there's none. Okay, yeah, I'd be nervous there for a second. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's all good. Not bad, Rick. <laughs> you learned well. Let's plug this again. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, plug it in. Bingo. Oh, that is cool. I like that. It says, come get your haircut, huh? I go get a bleeding. <laughs> yeah, I go get a bleeding, yeah. This barber pole is beautiful. It's going to be a quick and easy sell. Thanks a lot, man. You, you are bet. always the best. You bet. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure working for you. I love doing this stuff. Uh, keep it coming.
I have this hot dog cooler grill. I gotta see it. Okay, Tyler, come on out. Oh, God, that's great. How much are you asking for this? I'm asking 30. If he doesn't buy this thing, we're gonna be in some serious trouble. Oh, buddy, you're killing. So we're modifying a 1950s Victor Coca-Cola cooler into a hot dog stand. And a crucial step of the process is getting the Coca-Cola red shine. Coca-Cola has changed the shade, and it's red, at least a half a dozen times over the years. I usually try to match the shade to the year of the machine that it is. Pen striping takes a lot of skill, especially with something like the Coca-Cola logo. Even a small mistake is totally noticeable. It's not like we can just erase something and fix it. This thing's extremely difficult to get inside here. Okay, let's go at a little bit of an angle. There we go. All the parts on the Coca-Cola cooler grill have been welded, sanded, and painted. Now all we have to do is just put it back together. If it was easy, I'd have had Cowboy do it. I have a potential buyer all lined up. So as usual, time is tight. This project has taken a little bit more creative thinking because usually we just put things back together. Got it? Yes. This one here, we've got hot and cold next to each other. We're really gonna have to make this thing work. Okay. It's unbelievable how many parts go into a machine that just serves a hot dog and a Coke. But this piece is all about 50 style. This hot dog bar is gonna look sweet. So everything is shiny and chrome to the hilt. The attraction to these is the chrome, the color, the smell of the hot dogs. And of course, the cherry on top is the Coca-Cola logo. Hey, Rick. Hey, Robert. When my team and I took on this project, we had one customer in mind. He's a serious Coke collector. So I invited him to come over and check it out. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Rick, you know, I got this neat game room at my house, and I'm looking for something neat. What do you have? I got something really cool. I have this 1950s Coca-Cola hot dog cooler grill. They made only 50 of them. There's only five left in existence. This one isn't a totally original one, but I went from the drawings off the original one to make the exact same shape and size. It has everything in it, all the whistles, bells, and buzzers. I gotta see it. <laughs> all right. I gotta see it. Okay, Tyler, come on out. Oh, God, that's great. Is that cool or what? I love it. Here, come on, let's check it out. I have this uh, 10 car garage behind my house with a 50s game room on one side with black and white checkered floors and Coca Cola and everybody. And this hot dog grill would fit perfect. How'd you do this? The bottom half of it is a totally original C31 Victor Coca Cola cooler. And it was just totally trashed. We actually had to take this thing apart in a million pieces. We had to re insulate the thing, put it all back together. That used to be red on the top, and we ended up chroming that to give it more of a look. I even added the cash register. You know, when you're coming up <laughs> and you get yourself a soda, yeah. you gotta get paid for it, right? Yeah. The top of it. This thing right here is actually a feat in itself. When you're walking up to it, it basically just sort of exudes, come get something. So it's a full-blown, do-it-yourself, oh. sell yourself a hot dog and soda deal. You know, it's a total package. It's beautiful. It, you, you did just, it's, it's perfect. You reach in, Get yourself a bottle of Coke, and you pop it. You have yourself a nice cold Coke. <laughs> That'll work. I think it's got my name on it. Yeah? This hot dog grill is the most phenomenal thing I've ever seen. Just everything about this is just perfect. I couldn't find one scratch, one flaw, anything. It was perfect. It was, it was beautiful. I, I have to own it. I have to own it. That's just too neat. Rick, well, how much are you asking for this? An original one that there's only five of, I saw at auction go for $40,000. So this here, with the work I have into it, I'm asking, I'm asking 30. I spent $7,000 on the Coca-Cola cooler grill to convert it, including about 80 man hours. I know how much these things sell for, and it's worth every penny. Well, I can't give that. Um, what do you think? 18, 19. Oh, buddy, you're killing me. I'll come to like 27.5, but that's about it. You take 23 and a half. No, sir. You know, if you can go there, then good. If not, then you need to get back in your car and go home. Well, you know, Rick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about it. 
And uh, you still have it? Well, I'll come back and we'll visit about it. Okay. You think about it, right. you take care. I'm, I'm glad you got to see nah, it. Thanks for showing it to me. You bet. See you later. You bet. I couldn't make a deal on it because I thought he would take less, and I'm thinking if I wait a month, he may want to sell it for less. Hope nobody else buys it. Hope I end up with it. Looking tasty. Okay, well, it works. Always good to do a test run. Okay, clean up. All right.